It all began in the year 1483. It was a cold November night in the little town of Eisleben. The night watchman was making his last round at midnight. It's dark in all the houses. But there is still a candle burning in the home of Hans and Margarete Luther. Their son has been born. His name will be Martin. The years went by. Martin is five now and has begun school. It's a long road and during the cold winter days, he's carried all the way to school. His parents want Martin to grow up to a successful man. After 11 years in schools in Manfeld, Magdeburg and Eisenach, Martin knows how to read, write and speak Latin fluently. Latin is the language they use in the churches, even though many can't understand it. And the Word of God, the Bible, is available only in Latin. It is now the spring of 1501. A clear blue sky is stretching over the many church towers of the city of Erfurt. Erfurt is a city known for its many churches. Here Martin will study at the university. His dad wants him to be a lawyer. In these days many people go to church, but they still live in fear. A fear of hell. No one can tell them for sure how to escape hell, to be saved and come to be with God in heaven instead. Martin had thought a lot about this. Hmm, what can a man do to come to heaven after death? It is now the summer of 1505. Martin is on his way back to Erfurt after having visited his parents. The road is long and he has quite some time to ponder things. What do they really teach at the church? They teach that man is born, grows up and dies. After that God will punish him for all the bad things he's done. Because he's so occupied in his thoughts, he doesn't notice that the sky goes dark. He suddenly is right in the middle of a terrible storm. Desperately he seeks for shelter, but finds nothing. Oh God in heaven, I'm a sinner! You are holy, I can't live as you want me to! Oh God, be merciful! If I live through this, I will become a monk and join the monastery! Martin's parents are shocked, and his friends try to talk him out of it. But Martin sticks to his promise. Just a few weeks later, he's at the Augustine Monastery of Erfurt. Before he can become a monk, he needs to go through a time of testing. As a monk, he has to give away all his possessions. He is not allowed to marry, and he has to follow the rules of the abbot. Because Martin follows the rules perfectly, he passes the test. Every night he arises to the early morning prayer at the monastery church, followed by mass every morning and then six times more during the day. Martin fasts regularly. Still he's sad and worried. <sighs> it seems like I could not become a better person. I still do bad things and think bad thoughts. And God is just. He has to punish me for it. Oh, if only he was not just and holy. Oh, God in heaven. Desperately, Martin prays on the cold floor in his room. In the library of the monastery, Martin finds something to distract him from his sad thoughts. Here there are valuable books, handwritten pages from the church fathers, and the Bible, the word of God in Latin. Now Martin is happy to have learned Latin in school. He starts to memorize the scripture, page by page. If there is an answer to my questions, it has to be in this book. He studies hard and gains much knowledge. One day he is called upon by his superior. Brother Martin, you have been sent to the University of Wittenberg as a professor. In Wittenberg, Martin works really hard. 
He still studies the Bible and gives lectures on this very special and fascinating book. Often he sits in his room late at night and reads. In the candlelight he reads Romans, a letter written by Paul to the Christians in Rome. One verse says, For in the Gospel the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. There it is again, God's righteousness. Suddenly Martin understands what it means. The Gospel, the good news of the Bible, tells us of a righteousness that God wants to give freely. It is true, I am a sinner and I should be punished for my sins. But God has put the punishment on His own Son Jesus, who suffered and died on the cross in my place. God doesn't want to punish me. God wants to give me His righteousness as a gift. That makes me completely justified. And it's all by faith. By faith in Jesus Christ, who said, Whoever believes in me shall live, even though they die. Martin Luther is overwhelmed with joy. Finally, he understands God's message in the Bible. After this important discovery, Martin invites learned men to discuss the matter. He writes down 95 sentences, or theses as they call them. To publish the theses, he nails them to the door of Wittenberg Castle Church. That's how it was done in those days. Martin's 95 theses gets the people's attention. They gather around to see what he's written. Look, Dr. Luther had nailed something up on the door. It's in Latin. What does it say? Can anyone translate it into German? Wait, I'll try. Any truly repentant Christian has the right to full remission of penalty and guilt, even without indulgence letters. What does he mean by that? I guess he's saying that we are given forgiveness from God by grace, not by paying money to the church. Martin Luther's 95 Theses are translated, printed and spread across Germany within just two weeks. Many men in the church disapprove with Martin since he says that the church's teaching are false. He's ordered to take the Theses down, but by the time they are already spread, people are reading them and also other things he has written. It is now the spring of 1521, and a messenger is coming to Martin. I have an important message from the Emperor. The Emperor wants Martin to come before the Imperial Diet at Worms, a city in Germany. There Martin must explain what he means with his writings. So Martin goes to Worms, even though he knows that many want to see him dead but he also knows that God is with him. The Imperial Diet is a meeting with the most powerful people of the land. Martin Luther is taken before the Emperor. Everything he has written is laid out on a table. The Emperor's spokesman is interrogating Martin. Dr. Martin Luther, have you written these texts? Yes, I have. Do you confess what you have written is false? This is the burning question. What will he answer? Martin asks to have some more time to think about it. The Emperor grants him a day. The next day he will get the same question again. That night Martin can hardly sleep at all. He prays. Oh Lord my God, help me. Let me stand firm in your truth. And God is there for him. He gives him courage and strength for the hardest day of his life. The next day Martin stands before the Imperial Diet again and the Emperor's spokesman gives him a cold look. What is your answer? Will you take back what you have written? I believe in the word of God. Therefore, I cannot change anything. God help me. Amen. The Emperor is furious. Luther has to leave war. No one is allowed to help this rebellious monk. He's going to be arrested. But God protects Luther 
and sees to that he can be taken to Vatberg Castle in secret, so his enemies cannot find him. While he's in Vatberg Castle, Martin uses the name Squire Jörg. In just 11 weeks he translates the second part of the Bible, the New Testament, into German. No more people in Germany can read the Gospel, the good news about Jesus Christ. Later Martin and his companions translate the Old Testament too. Now the Germans can read the whole Bible in their own language. Martin died in 1546 and up until now there have been many who like him know from the Bible. I do not deserve a place in heaven, but I know my sins are forgiven by God because Jesus Christ paid for them when he died on the cross for me.